video we're going to show you how to properly stay a fence. We're starting off we've got a three two and a half foot extension gun extension. We're using a 310 tip and we're using pretty low pressure on a 440 that's set up around the corner. We've um, in this task we've got a 3M hand masker with inch and a half tape and we've used that. We've got the fence where it dead ends into a stucco house right here and we've masked two rows of um, uh, masking around the house so we don't get overspray on the house and if you're um, uncomfortable or li have little experience spraying you probably want to put at least three rows of masking there so you don't get overspray on the house and we've got cardboard shields down here there's rock around here we're going to try to minimize the cardboard um, or the overspray on the rocks and the cardboard shields help do that. We also use the cardboard shields to minimize the overspray over the top. We've got uh, a two and a half gallon bucket with a two and a half inch angled sash brush and a four inch nap that we're also using because when we're spraying we're going to bring our spray up to this height and go back down so we don't send overspray to the house across the way which is um, right over there, not too far away from us. And then we'll just go back and back brush and roll back. When we're actually spraying this fence, there's about a quarter inch gap in these um, pickets right here. And if you spray dead on, it's going to shed overspray through the picket. So we're going to want to be spraying at a slight angle, probably a 45 degree angle. Same if there's any big knot holes. If you spray straight through the knot hole, it's going to shoot overspray to the other side of the fence. So we start off spraying, and we're just going to spray at an angle, just go up and down, and I'm not going to go quite to the top of the fence, just right back up. Get down to our cardboard shield, keep it at an angle. And then we're going to do one whole section at a time. Once we complete a, a full length section, you got four by four posts that is a section, and then we'll just go back. We're going to back roll this top, that way we get it, and then we're going to back roll the top of the fence here too. And then we also use our brush, just in case you go back, if there was any runs, any places that need to be back brushed that look really dry, we can actually back brush those spots. Same with this bottom piece down here. We're actually just restaining this fence, the same color as it was before. So we're going to keep my gun at an angle, minimize the overspray through the gap. Go back the opposite direction. Use our four inch nap to back brush the top. Back brush this bottom piece right here. Going to get around the post. We're in a tight space for a small alleyway. If you don't have as much experience spraying, you can just release the trigger each time. By releasing the trigger, it actually saves product. You don't use as much product. You want to back brush, back roll the post. Any places that look dry or look like they, this is a smooth board right here. The smooth boards could possibly run, so we back brush them. We're using Sherwin Williams solid color woodscapes on this fence here. And uh, we're going to be doing the full leak fence, keeping our cardboard shields down here to minimize overspray. You can come to the top if you wanted to and spray it like that if you wanted to to keep overspray from going to the opposite side. Make sure you keep your pressure low. Keep your tip size small. Um, a 310 or a 510 tip would be the ideal tip. Nothing larger than a 10 for doing stains.